I'm Dr. Chrissy. Uh, today I'm going to share with you a journal pearl, journal pearls about the vacuum disc phenomenon and intravertebral cleft phenomenon. A pumping phenomenon can explain the formation of vacuum discs. In a normal joint space, you have an impermeable joint. When you provide stresses on this joint, such as a distraction force, demonstrated here by pulling of the plunger from a medicine vial, dissolved gas within the surrounding tissue will not be able to enter this joint space. However, when you have a diseased joint, such as this joint with joint degeneration, uh, the joint space is now permeable. When you provide stresses on this joint, such as distraction forces, gas and or fluid can enter the permeable joint space. Uh, vacuum phenomenon is seen more on extension and supine views. This is the position when the paraspinal muscles are contracting and are providing the distraction forces on the vertebra. On the other hand, it is more obscured or may not be seen during flexion views. Now, let's look at some examples. So, these are uh, sagittal CT images of the lumbar spine in which we can see that there is joint degeneration in the form of antique sclerosis, we have ostrophytes here, and decrease in the height of the intervertebral discs. In the upright position, the vacuum phenomenon is hardly seen. However, in the supine view where there is distraction forces from the paraspinal muscles, the vacuum phenomenon is better delineated. The same phenomenon or a similar phenomenon occurs in the um, osteoporotic fracture. So these are sequential images of the sagittal view of the spine taken in T2 weighted images in which we see that an initial cleft or a vacuum cleft is slowly being filled in with fluid as time progresses. And this happens in this patient in the supine position. This is what we call the intravertebral cleft phenomenon. And if you can demonstrate this, that an initial empty cleft is slowly being filled with water or fluid, um, it is predictive of a benign etiology. If you think about it, it makes sense because if you have an empty space slowly being filled in with fluid, it means that there is no mass there in the first place. So our take-home messages for this talk is that vacuum this phenomenon can vary on the patient's position. It is accentuated in the extension or prolonged spine. Number two, vacuum this phenomenon can present with gas or fluid signal within the discs. And if fluid signal is seen within the disc, it may mimic infection. So it's important to look for secondary signs to say if it is indeed an infection or is it just a degenerative change. And third, intravertebral cleft phenomenon um, predicts a benign etiology of vertebral collapse. In this article, it was said that intravertebral cleft phenomenon can virtually exclude tumor and infectious etiology with some exceptions. This is my reference and recommended reading, Collier's The Spectrum of Vacuum Phenomenon and Gas in the Spine. That's it. Thank you for listening.